Hello everybody, Peter of England, bringing you a video prior to the, the new year and the festive uh, activities that no doubt you will all enjoy in preparation for entry into 2023, which is going to be quite a, a momentous year for all those people who are involved with Removement and Weir Bank. Now, as many of you will know from watching the previous videos on this channel, uh, all the previous members um, and existing members of Weir Bank have been uh, made private bankers. And this is a, a prequel uh, and a necessary step to allowing them to start taking control of their individual financial responsibilities and affairs that have been usurped or taken from them uh, involuntarily in many cases due to their laziness, their ignorance and the deception that have been perpetrated on them by the global banking cartels which are primarily obviously in the hands of government agencies and the government agencies therefore propel the justice departments and the judiciary who are then uh, in the hands of the attorneys and lawyers who are then in the hands of the bailiffs and the companies that repossess people for so-called non-payment of debt. So, this is the, the nature of this video today, is to give good news to everybody out there who is involved in us and who is going to be involved in us, with us, sorry, through 2023. Uh, because what we're going to do is, not in this video, but in the next, which is a little bit more complicated and a little bit more researched and detailed, and uh, I'm uh, undertaking that now, I'm going to understand, uh, sorry, I'm going to help you understand and reveal to you some of the well-documented effects of why the debt burden is becoming so astronomically high and so, um, so immense for all countries of the world, but equally to tell you why it's being perpetrated, who's behind it, and what the, the overall agenda of this, this uh, level of, of debt is for. So it's debt, debt, debt. Everywhere is debt. And for you, there is more austerity, more austerity, and more austerity being applied to you. It doesn't matter whether you're in Australia, whether you're in New Zealand, whether you're in Mongolia, whether you're in Europe, it's always the same story, more and more debt. So whether it's your mortgage, your credit cards, whether it's your taxes, whether it's utility bills, Everything is mounting and I'm going to show you now or demonstrate in the next few minutes the cause and effect which gives you the answers as to how you can unpick this, this malaise, this, this terrible bind that you seem to be in. Now, you must remember first of all that banks are the paymasters. The banks pay the government. The governments pay the courts. The courts, in effect, are run in association, hand in hand, with the attorneys. And they are, in effect, then, the, um, the paymasters of the debt collection companies that come after you. So what I'm trying to show you now is there are, there's a way of undoing this all. And you've got to go back in time before we can go forward in time. And where we've got to go back... And we're going to use the United States as an example of this, and this will be presented in great, uh, greater detail in the next video, but it will go back all the way to 1776 for the, um, for the United States, and then it will go all the way back to 1694 for the British. That was the formation of the Bank of England, and in 1776 in the United States, the first banking charter was given to what's called the Bank of America, which was a Rothschild funded and controlled bank, which then led to certain affairs that bankrupted the United States. And ultimately, the Congress withdrew the charter, but it was then 100 years later that that charter was re-established in, in 1912, 1913, okay, under the, what's called the Federal Reserve Act. So the... Way forward, the route map is going to be prepared by Freeman Legal Services. And what that's going to do is it's going to show you a way, a, we believe, a foolproof way for you undoing the bind that you are in. And this bind really is as follows. Um, 
many people still believe that, for example, in the United Kingdom and in the United States, there is something called common law. I would suggest, for those people who want to research this a little bit more deeply, if you actually go back to 1944, when the Bretton Woods Agreement was put in place, when uh, 100 com countries of the world, with 44 signatories prior to that, agreed on a voluntary bankruptcy following the close proximity to the end of World War II. Okay? But if we go slightly further back, and using again the United States as the model, in 1933, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the President of the United States at the time, declared that the United States had gone bankrupt. And from that moment, there was no legal money, there was no gold and silver to pay private debt, and so everyone was pushed onto the public side, and gold and silver was made unlawful. All of it was collected, and in replace for the gold and silver that the United States' wealth had been based upon, whereby the ordinary man in the street could go into the countryside uh, and dig his wealth out of the ground, suddenly he was now in the hands of the Federal Reserve and the banking establishment, and the possession even of gold and silver in certain amounts was no longer lawful. In fact, it was against the law. So there was a bankruptcy declared, and from that moment, all jurisdiction was placed internationally for the United States into what's called Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction. These were administrative courts where you now, your grandparents and your parents, were in effect pledged as collateral to the receivers. And the receivers in the bankruptcy were none other than the European monarchies, royalties and banking families under the guise of, a few years later, when the United Nations was formed as a result of Bretton Woods in 1944, the 44 and then 100 com countries that declared voluntary bankruptcy to supposedly put the world on a better financial footing, all declared bankruptcy and the IMF and the World Bank took control. So from that point, 1933 generally for the United States, the United Kingdom was already bankrupt through, the world, uh, through world War II, having to give gold on a, what's called a cash and carry basis to the United States for the purchase of materials. So, coming out of the Second World War, everybody was bankrupt. They'd been bankrupted by the international bankers, and so an agreement was put together, and that took the form of Bretton Woods. So this is coming to the, the crunch now. What that means for you, whether you're in Australia, in Canada, in America, or in the United Kingdom, that Congress and the Senate and all of Parliament are on the payroll directly of the IMF. For example, in the United States, and this applies to any country in the world, you will find that, for example, the Attorney General, who is part of the Department of Justice, and the Secretary of State in the United Kingdom, that's called the Home Secretary, they are on the board of Interpol for administrative uh, reasons for justice. Now, Interpol has certain articles within it which actually make sure the individual swears allegiance to that organisation and renounces, in effect, its, led, its, its pledges or his oaths of office that he's taken to his, his home country. So they're no longer sovereign once they're involved in that. Also, as far as the bankruptcy is concerned, the IMF are the paymasters. Therefore, do not forget, the countries are in a permanent state of indebtedness and receivership, and the debt burdens just grow and grow and grow. So this hopefully gives you some uh, idea of why, for example, in the United States and the United Kingdom, the parliaments and the Congress keep passing more and more monetary bills, but more and more debt is being accrued to you. I think in the United States at the moment it stands at around about 30 or 32 trillion of GDP um, debt. And that means that's owed to you. Yeah, that's a debt owed to you, not the other way around. So, 
what we're going to show you is how to undo the the straight jacket, the bind, the trap that you've been put in. Many people have spoken about these subjects, but very few people have actually put it together in the, the way that we're going to show you how to, to proceed and, and move forward. One of the first things you're going to have to do is make a statutory declaration. Uh, in the United Kingdom and for the Commonwealth countries, I think it's called the Statutory Declarations Act 1835. In the United States, it's called something different. Um, I think it's more akin to an affidavit. The difference is an affidavit is sworn on oath. A statutory declaration is just be, is to be made in front of an official or someone with some type of legal authority. It could be a notary. And the notary doesn't have to attest to the validity or the, the veracity of what's being said. He, they just need to be there as witnesses. So typically, a statutory declaration, we would encourage you to go to the court and you will make a statutory declaration to the effect that certain actions have been perpetrated on to you, that you have become aware that you are the chattel property of a bankrupt establishment and as a result, having sworn that statutory declaration in the relevant jurisdiction, which is actually in that court, um, that you are no longer to be bound by the intricacies and what's called the adhesion contracts that have been forced upon you. What you're then going to do is take copies of that declaration and you're going to send it to your creditors so-called whether that's for federal tax, state taxes, whether it's to the mortgage company, whether it's to the credit card company or utilities company, and what you're going to actually allege is what's called fraud in the factum. Yeah? So you're actually alleging now that a fraud has been perpetrated upon you and you have now become aware of it. This is the difference. Now, the checks that you will be using, the Weir Bank checks, to pay these bills are of a different classification because you are now declaring yourself as a private banker generating your own funds independent of any organization like the IMF or the World Bank or the Bank of International Settlements which claims that it is uh, using you as property. You are pledged as a work uh, asset for the governmental regime who has not made you aware of the circumstances of this bankruptcy. What this leads to is the allegation of fraud and it says in, in law fraud vitiates everything. That means it abolishes it. It makes it null, it makes it void, it makes it non-existent. One of the classic uh, cases for this was Lazarus Estates against Beasley 1956, one Queen's Bench at 720, where Lord Denning, Master of the Rolls, basically enunciated that that is the situation across the board. If it's fraudulent, the court will, and this is one of the big, big things that people have missed. When you go into court, if you're not pleading fraud, fraud in the factum, the court will not help you to address it because it's covering up all of the thieving and the criminality that the banking organisations have perpetrated upon you. The government isn't going to help you. The judges are juiced in. They are being paid by the IMF. The judge probably doesn't even know it. So what you've got to do is, one, plead it and then prove it. We can do both. You do the pleading. We will show you how to prove it. We have the documents now that you can present to a judge or you can produce prior to the case and whereupon we are going to suggest that you begin asking for what's called a special appearance. A special appearance in front of the judge so you get this done on a one by one case, what's called in camera and the reason that you're asking for that is that you don't want to embarrass the court or have this particular type of information available in an open court before the press and other media channels and you're doing this as a favour to the court. Now we'll do that as a favour until it gets to such an extent that every man and his dog is doing it, but by then we should have enabled ourselves to call the Great Reset in our benefit before the likes of Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum managed to pull it from under your feet um, in 2023, 24, 25, which is where they're heading for it. So we've got limited time to do this, and so we're showing you 
the cause which needs addressing. All this um, band-aid application uh, of minor remedies is inconsequential really on the basis that we need to address the cause, not the effects. So we can give you the proof, uh, we can give you everything that is required, but you've got to join with us. For now, you don't have to do anything. This is just a, a, a pre-warning, a heads up to make sure that you stay uh, on the channel, you look for more information, and what we're going to show you is, in effect, that from the time of the bankruptcy, when all of the countries of the world were put into a voluntary liquidation, and that the IMF then took over as the receiver and the Federal Reserve in the United States, the Bank of England and the Bank of France in these relevant countries, stepped in and started to handle the payment system, then every government, agent, officer, official, whether they were in the judiciary, the executive branches, or the legislative branches, were now on the payroll of the IMF. And for everybody in the United States and in the United Kingdom, that might give you some indication now why the rule of law is no longer any, uh, of any existence. This is why people like Roger Stone um, can be arrested, uh, why Steve Bannon does not get a fair hearing in front of a court, because they're in Admiralty Maritime jurisdiction and the Admiralty Maritime Law pays no attention to the rights that you might have on the common law or equity, they are simply just processing you as nothing other than an asset that is pledged to the bankruptcy. So, the private side is where you need to get back to. We're going to show you how to do it, and I hope this video helps everyone out there. Please pass it on, uh, send it to whoever you think might find it of interest, and stay tuned for the next video, which will go into the intricacies of um, just how the officers of state have sold themselves out and how, for example, the, the, um, the unwritten constitution in the United Kingdom does not exist and since 1944 there is no constitution in the United States. What they're doing is paying lip service to it when they require it so that they don't stampede the populations into a full understanding that it's non-existence and was abolished. Okay, thank you.